Hi everyone and welcome to your weekly energy update, a general tarot guidance taking a look at how this week's energies are likely to influence our lives both individually and collectively. Now I must be totally honest with you, the, today's reading totally took me by surprise. I am not very certain what to make of it, how to even interpret this. Because, you know, a moment comes in everyone's life, especially, let's say, from a more professional perspective, when you kind of have a lot of experience, you saw everything, and then there is one moment where absolutely nothing makes sense because there is a situation which you never, ever, ever encountered in your life. And today's reading is definitely one of those moments for me personally, because I am not very sure what to make of this. Even when I'm making this intro, I'm actually thinking, should I actually do this reading? Or should I just delete it and reshuffle the cards, redo everything until something which makes a little bit more sense comes out? And you know, the reason why this is so very unusual for me is because... At first glance, what these cards say is that something surprising is going to happen this week. But that surprise is very impactful from a rather spiritual and philosophical and karmic perspective. And more collectively than individually. And that surprise is actually how we take it, how we look at it individually. For some people it can be perhaps the most pleasant kind of surprise. For other people it can be, you know, a very unpleasant kind of surprise. But this impacts not really our material situation, not really the usual kind of things, but more like our world view. And that is pretty severe or that is pretty powerful. Because... What has to happen to truly, you know, like, influence our worldview as a collective? And, you know, the Justice card, without a doubt, this means that it's gonna split us up, but regarding our worldview, so what does that actually mean? What does that translate to? And naturally, as you can see, I pulled clarifying cards, and instead of clarifying it, they deepened the mystery. So basically, my suggestion is that if you are looking forward to something like very practical, like the usual predictions I make, maybe this time you should skip this reading, this video. Or if you feel guided to just join me in this philosophy or contemplation then you are more than welcome to just, regardless of what I'm about to say, like, take it with a pinch of salt. It's philosophy, really. Because we might not be able to understand absolutely anything until we kind of live it, until it enters into our sphere of awareness, because this is really under a shroud of mystery. And as... Much as I want to translate all of this into something practical, for example, this is likely to happen, that is likely to happen, the energies point towards this direction or that direction, this is where I cannot even anticipate what all of this can possibly mean in a down-to-earth way. I'm thinking to myself, is this just the energy? Are we just gonna feel all of this, like, emotionally perhaps, very, in a subtle way, in an ethereal way? Or is something, like a big world event, gonna make us think and philosophize about, let's say, certain aspects of life which we weren't focusing on until this moment? And, you know, even if it's just an emotional energy, what this actually tells me is that everyone will have to decide for themselves what it means for them personally or what 
feelings, emotions, it triggers within them. So this is so very subjective that I can simply conclude this whole reading in a single sentence. As we stepped into the great unknown, the future basically as a collective, well, this might be one of those moments when a part of that mystery reveals itself. And also perhaps because something is being revealed that's without a shadow of a doubt, this might be a moment when, you know, when we step into the unknown, we don't know what to expect. We don't even know if what awaits us, you know, the future is delighting us or we really, really dislike it. It's not what we want to live and experience. So this is one of those moments when we can actually decide for ourselves if this is something we look forward to or if it's something that we don't necessarily feel very joyous about. So anyway, if you stayed with me until this moment, let's begin the reading. And the first energy that appears is the Seven of Wands, Seven of Fire in this card, clarified by the Four of Cups and the Six of Cups. Now from an individual perspective, this is not a big deal. It means that something that you have been working on a project, a plan, the fulfillment of a wish, of a personal goal, maybe even a childhood dream of yours, that in the recent past, or perhaps in the past even seven years for some people, you received a lot of divine guidance, a lot of spiritual help from your guides or the other side, so to speak, maybe an ancestor of yours, or for some people, they just really believed in their dream and they tried everything to accomplish it, to do what they can in order to make that dream reality. Well, next week they might get a new guidance or they will reach an important milestone in the completion of their goal. The big prize, symbolically speaking, the fulfillment of that dream might not be there yet, but this might be one of those moments when the universe, at least from an emotional perspective, recharges your batteries and motivates you to keep on working, keep on believing, keep on going, because you're definitely on the right path, on the right track, even if you might not feel it this way right now. Now, collectively, however, it's a totally different picture because the seven of fire, the seven of wands, something is building up and because it's fire, well, that might be conflict, that might be an assertive action, that might even be something that a nation or even the whole world has been working towards. And even if it's something non-aggressive, as in not, to do with a conflict, it's still something ambitious, it is still fueled by willpower, it is still fueled by perhaps the desires of many, many people. But you know, we don't know which category, if this makes sense, it can be, for example, professionals, scientists, politicians, or people in general. But we do know that this is like a long-term goal, this isn't something which can be completed there and then. It can also have something to do with energy in a very physical sense, like, I don't know, fusion or nuclear power, eco power, green friendly power source, solar power. It can also be fuel. It can simply be humanity's ambitious project, one of them, like space exploration or propulsion or a bigger project that was initiated perhaps seven years ago. And this week might be a moment of breakthrough when something important happens. But again, it's not really the action, the physical result, the success or whatever this is that matters. But perhaps... The accomplishment has a karmic and philosophical symbol to it. It is something that either was prophesized by 
a very big prophet, for example, who knows Nostradamus or even a biblical picture that was depicted in, I don't know, Revelations, whatever. And, you know, it's not something positive or negative. It is just a moment of breakthrough which symbolizes that we, that we are already quantum leaped into a different future where we have a lot of power and influence over something. Another expression and possible interpretation of this energy, which doesn't necessarily have to do with work, it might have to do with a very symbolic event, which was symbolically rooted in the Sagittarian lunar eclipse that we had in May. And if you recall... I interpreted the fact that, you know, the moon is on the south node in Sagittarius. Sagittarius means international law. It means justice. And at the same time, it can mean religion. And I said that whatever happens around that time is going to be extremely symbolic because it is almost like the universe asking our species... Have you learned from the lessons of the past? And if you truly learned, this is the moment when you have to prove it by acting with wisdom and diligence. Now, that symbolic event around that Sagittarian lunar eclipse, if you remember, was, you know, the rocket storm on the skies of Israel, which kind of suggested that there is still a religious and perhaps ethnical hidden war, if this makes sense, that runs in the background that has not been settled yet, that has not been released yet, South Node, a powerful karmic release. And now we have the Afghanistan situation, which can be seen in a very dual way. Some see it as the natural law of the land being restored, regardless of how other nations try to change it, while others might see it as the past returning in a very literal sense. And it's perhaps not what physically happened which matters here, what matters even more is the philosophy of it because this event was somehow prophesized by someone like a holy text or a big prophet or a big seer perhaps a humanity's most relevant astrologers this kind of starts something symbolic something prophetic but again, I say, it's not the physical event that matters. It's the energy or the karmic forces at work that will matter because by this, humanity made a passive choice and the future is going to be built on that. Now, what this means, I don't know. We'll just have to live and see. And yet another possible interpretation of this energy well, that means that history repeats itself. But what this actually means, also, I don't know. I have no idea. The seven of fire, well, what does that mean? We worked for and towards something, but that can be so very many things. What immediately pops into my mind is like the Fukushima disaster. Does it say that it's a natural calamity? Does it say that we had to modernize a specific industry where a big disaster took place at one point in our history and we didn't do that part of the work? We didn't modernize it or make it safe as much as we should have? You know, whatever this event, symbolic event is, we have to wait and see and live it. Now we also have the Justice card, clarified by the Justice card and the Seven of Swords reversed. Now from an individual perspective, this is very straightforward. It basically means that either you receive some communication, 
information, perhaps certain documents or correspondence with authorities, the law or whatever takes place in your life, which will give you clarity to make a choice, a decision. That choice or decision might not necessarily have to be made this week, but you will just have the clarity. You will have a really, really good image in your mind and also in your heart of what you need to do next or what you want to do next, what your choices or options are. And for some people, it's not necessarily like a official matter, but it's more like towards a person, a relationship, a connection, who you can trust, who you want to share your future with, and who perhaps failed your own morality test. And also with the Seven of Swords, especially reversed, it becomes that much clearer to you where it is that you want to live, which local community is, you know, suitable for the person who you truly are. So for some people, this actually translates to, you know, seeing and knowing that much more clearly and being sure of yourself either that where you're living right now is not very favorable for you and you have no future there in the sense that your community does not reflect your values, your morality, your lifestyle, your dreams and wishes, etc. While for other people, of course, it's the opposite where you see exactly why, let's say, your own karmic path, the, your divine guidance led you to where you are right now because something truly resonates with you and that community. Now, on the world stage, this is very, very suggestive. A moment of truth, a moment of justice. This can be a massive and really, really relevant legal change where the law itself is modified. It is, let's say, maybe reconfigured. It is made to reflect a truth that is out there. This can also mean a big legal case, but where the power players are not really people, but maybe nations, or if it's people, if it, it's the head of a nation. And this can also represent very well that it is the international community who will have to make a very, very delicate and complicated uh, choice, decision, agreement, which is legally binding for the whole world, basically. This might also have to do with the recent past, because, you know, that Seven of Swords reversed might represent that a secret comes out, something which was hidden is now revealed, and that something is, well, you know, a kind of foul play, maybe from an economic perspective, maybe from a legal perspective, maybe it is like the strategies or hidden agreements of big corporations, because this affects organizations, so collectives, groups of people. But of course, it might not be this week when whatever decision the international community has to make is going to be born. Perhaps this week is one of those weeks where they know that they have to make a decision, they have to take a stance, they have to do something, but it's not yet clear what that is, or maybe not all sides, all parties, all, you know, everyone involved in this can reach an agreement. So maybe this week is when they're contemplating, when they are initiating negotiations, when they are planning perhaps a big summit or something, but this is on the world stage, so this is going to be news. And last but not least, this might be something that has to do with discrimination, and I really don't want to get into that subject. But you know, why is it so very symbolic and important? Well, perhaps if an international court of justice or something really, really important rules a certain decision, well, you can imagine that it will basically influence the course of justice for very many nations, very many countries. Like, for just for an example purpose, 
like if the EU decides that something is not lawful, not correct, and that is final, that is the final decision, for example, well, each member state will have to reflect that in their own legislation. So, for example, if they say that discriminating these people or those people is wrong and it shouldn't be like that, well, that is going to be legally binding for every nation. And perhaps other countries which are not part of the EU are going to take that into consideration and mirror that their own way. But this is just an example to understand what a legal change can represent. And of course, a legal change, well, that is philosophy, isn't it? That is not particularly real. What is the law outside of our human morality? It, it doesn't exist, does it? And now we get to the most mysterious part of our reading, where we have the star card, clarified by the two of swords and the star card again. Now, individually, this is actually quite a beautiful energy. It is hopeful. And this might have to do with this upcoming full moon in Aquarius, the star card in Tarot, is the symbol of Aquarius, it is hopes and dreams, and Jupiter is there, and the sun opposes Jupiter, so this can mean a big hype of hope, hopefulness, optimism, positivity, where you just want to believe in your future, in your goals, in your dreams, and one way or another, either through a person, another person in your life, or through a symbolic event the universe is going to actually feed your hope because this two of swords means that deep inside of you you will decide that you want to focus on your hope you want to feed your hope you want to be that person who accomplishes whatever you hope to accomplish for so it's almost like a tiny little spark hitting a hay stack and setting it ablaze, but in the most positive sense. For other people, this can also represent that whatever you're hoping for or whatever sparks up your hope might be a promise of a person, a promise someone makes to you, or a truth someone tells you, a revelation someone helps you achieve if this makes sense. And regardless what that revelation or truth is, even if it might not be something very positive, like perhaps a reality check where someone tells you to your face, don't invest that much energy into whatever you're doing because it cannot be as, let's say, fruitful as you hope it to be because of certain very, very rational, logical reasons and you will not take that as a criticism or as they trying to defeat you but quite the opposite way it frees you you see their truth and you're thankful and you feel like a burden has fallen off your heart or whatever or perhaps someone tells you that you know how you feel about this person well they are not who you think they are and they give you facts and you know whatever and even though that might be a little bit disillusioning, a reality check, it still comes as something truly positive, as a blessing, because you can release it, let it go, eliminate it there and then. But, you know, for most people, I do think this is some kind of good news or a promise, a favorable communication, or them making the best decision possible. And for others still... Maybe that decision was made maybe two months ago, two weeks ago, two days ago. And it is only now when you see how wise you were, how truly accurate your inner GPS was to lead you to the best possible choice path, etc. Now, from a collective perspective, this doesn't actually say that something is going to happen. It just says that this is the dual moment when we have to decide for ourselves 
what the future that is being unraveled before our eyes, as in exactly to complete the meaning of the previous cards, because a moment of revelation, a moment of truth, a moment when we can actually anticipate even just a tiny little bit where everything is guiding us, leading us, what our future is going to look like. Well, only in that moment when we can at least anticipate something, when we can decide what it means for us personally, can we truly attribute any kind of feeling or emotion to that. So, as I said in the beginning of the reading, for some people this is going to be so very hopeful when they will feel that it is actually the divine confirming their hopes. Again, the symbolism of the prophecy... Something in that prophecy which kind of involves that they will become aware of what that prophecy is, is going to give them a lot of hope or faith, or this could actually appear as those people, a part of those people will interpret this as their faith being confirmed. Now for others, it's the opposite where they become aware that perhaps the future that humanity is navigating towards is not the kind of future that delights them, that is, you know, prosperous for them or permissive to, for them to be who they, who it is that they are. So, you know, either way, it will definitely change the way we feel about the future. Now next we have the Builder, which is the Emperor, clarified by the Nine of so- Knight of Swords and the King of Swords. Now from a very personal perspective, this just confirms the meaning of the previous cards. When you know where you stand, for example, when someone makes you a prophecy, when, you, this, you, when you're able to make a clear and safe and sound decision for yourself, well, of course you're going to feel like your life is under your control and whatever you're working towards, the builder, is gonna be based on your preference, on your choice. So you will also have control over the outcome. So this almost comes as an emotional state of feeling safe and being able to trust yourself, being able to trust your choices, and most importantly, being able to make all the right actions towards whatever you want to work. Now, on the world stage, collectively speaking, this is very self-explanatory, really. The builder, as in the emperor, a world leader, or a powerful nation, someone who is in a leadership position, someone who pulls the string, someone who has to make choices for everyone, basically a king, This is just an example. And the Knight of Swords, King of Swords, tactics. Building up the tactics. Deciding rationally. Deciding logically. Creating plans. Making, again, strategies. Or trying their very, very hardest to brainstorm. To figure something out. To make, like, a very good choice. Or to steer the way things are towards a favorable direction, if this makes sense. Because, you know, this king of swords, again, the king symbol, the leader symbol, well, he is responsible for the tactics, for the rationality, for the implementation of the idea and the plan. So basically, the plan has to almost be flawless. The plan has to make sense. The plan has to be very logical and rational in order for it to produce very good and favorable results. So basically, the plan where we are at the drawing board, the schematics of everything, is the basis. Like a building is not going to be steady, it is not going to be very safe, it is not even going to look very aesthetic. If the plans, you know, the drawing board, what we, what the architect creates is chaotic, flawed, or doesn't really make any sense. So, you know, this also suggests that some kind of decision has to be made, but 
no if there is a summit of there or the, if there is a council of some kinds well this is going to be that week where people or leaders or nations or whatever are going to be summoned and they are going to sit down and initiate talks discussions negotiations the symbolism of the swords they will communicate share their thoughts even you know swords share their technology share their discovery share their database so this can be quite interesting but you know the swords energy the element of air well it is just the drawing board like when you build a building first of all there has to be an architect and he has to make the schematics on paper or you know on a computer or whatever and how the schematics is well ultimately determines how the building is going to look like and be like so if the schematics are flawed or they are not very good quality not a lot of effort was placed into it the building is also going to be pretty flawed or it will look aesthetically very displeasing etc so this is a very important energy indeed but again ultimately what exactly this might mean i have no idea and perhaps what actually troubles me the most why this week why now it doesn't really make any sense that's why i strongly suggest that everything that i have said until this present moment you take you know with a pinch of salt don't take it seriously we'll just see what ever comes into our awareness this week and finally i also pulled cards for divine guidance and this is also very unusual we have the sage and you know the sage is maturity spiritual maturity wisdom understanding when someone lived through so many karmic lessons life lessons a uh, practical lessons even and they embody their wisdom they know what's right they know what's wrong and perhaps the most important part of the sage knowing when you don't know and admitting it the most unwise thing anyone especially a spiritual person can do is not to admit when they don't know and that means that whatever they're going to say or advise someone else is going to be a big lucky guess and that never ever ever leads to a good place but on the other hand we have the youth so this is the three of wands in classic tarot but anyway it means like the inner adult the inner sage the mature spirit and soul that we embody meets the inner child the inner child who is young who loves life who is innocent who is thirsting for experiences and this is almost like a paradox like a dichotomy where we are both the sage and the inner child at the same time so what does this actually mean are we prepared to take another step in our spiritual journeys where we embody this time the energy of the fool we completed one cycle you know the tarot from 0 to 21 starting with the fool the innocence the great unknown where we don't have any experience whatsoever perhaps only curiosity and the beginner's luck ending with the world card completion full maturity true knowledge true understanding true acceptance of the world and everything in it and of course we are also part of the world and to go even deeper philosophically the world is inside of us we as a being are a world of our own so what does that mean do we begin a new but where we also have as a treasure as a resource as that little pouch that the fool carries with him to serve him on the journey where that little pouch is all of our experiences and wisdom our maturity that we could embody in the past cycle so this is a very unusual and also exciting advice from a spiritual perspective because this does suggest 
that this is going to be the beginning of a phase where one way or another we are definitely going to look at the world, even at our own lives, through a very innocent lens, through a very innocent beginner, so to speak, perspective. And one way or another, a new adventure awaits all of us. And to top this up even more, well, ultimately, this three of wands, this youthful fire energy also suggests the inner child has a hidden, like a passive blessing, that which every single child, every single youthful person has in this world in existence. And that is that very unique, I'm not even sure how to call it, ability or state of being perhaps, where we truly don't need to know, we don't have to embody knowledge, information, to get all the details, because we have the power to believe. You know, believing in everything and knowing nothing at all and being so very okay with it. So basically, this is the divine guidance. So thank you so much for listening. As I said at the beginning of the recording and all throughout the recording, what this means, well, I really, really don't know. We'll have to live and see. So thank you for honoring me with your attention. Thank you for listening. Until next time, bye for now.